Hello, hello. We are on another video. So, on the first one, you'll just have to see it. This one is going to be a different topic, but... So, today is a special day for me. April 27th. And it's my son's birthday. And what I wanted to put out there for a message is that just to be on your guard with everything, you know, and in the happiest of moments and in the celebration of something, just always be on your guard. I'm not saying to expect bad to happen. Don't do that because you don't want those, don't even want that energy coming to you but just prepare for it if it do come if it don't stay in your celebratory you know yay moment or moments you know really seize those opportunities but i wanted to share something because it was it was irritating so Today is my son's birthday, and his dad only have one child's father. No shade to if you have more than one. No shade. I'm not judging. I'm just I'm just telling you what, what my thing is, what my life is. But mm. So my first child is not with me. He's alive, he's adopted out, but I received a message from his dad and quite frankly, I really didn't want to hear it because he doesn't ask about our son. So, it didn't matter what he had to say or anything like that, but it was very interesting to see what his message was. And what I can say is that the devil is a trip. The devil is a trip. The devil is a trip. Because here his dad go bringing up sorrowful, sorrowful feelings on this day. And I didn't feel like that, you know. Um, of course, you have that moment to where if you have a child that's adopted out and not with you, you, you constantly have this guilt of, you know, I wasn't a good parent. I didn't do enough. I could have provided more, I could have done more, you know, so any good parent would have those feelings, but I wasn't basking in those feelings. And here this dude go, his dad, bringing up stuff just about, you know, I know it's painful for you. And it's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because I know where our son is. You don't. He does, but he doesn't. And like I said, he, he doesn't ask. He does not ask. His dad does not ask. His dad does not ask. Let me say it again. His dad does not ask about our son, about our first son. So do I want to hear anything he has to say? No. Is anything that he has to say bringing light or life? No. Has it done it in the past? No. And I say be on your guard because it be people like him to come in to create a situation or to bait you into being depressed. And you weren't feeling like that. You were perfectly okay before talking to this person. And then they just bring something up. And it's just like, for one, 
You don't ask about how this child is doing. You don't even get to say happy birthday. Okay. Okay, so you do. Okay, so I hear my elders speaking to me in my ears and the Lord. Okay, so you do get to you do get to say happy birthday, but you don't ask about them though. So what good is is you bringing up this drama, this stuff on this day? I'm fine. Yes, and again, like I said, you're going to have those moments as as that parent that's just like, man, if I hadn't done this or if I hadn't taken this route or if I just would have got myself together a lot sooner, I wouldn't have my child in this with another family. You just wouldn't. So, and that never goes away. But on the other hand, I get to speak to my child whenever possible. Whenever that family allows me to speak to my child, then that's when I speak to them. And I and I make attempts. You know, I'm not just waiting on them. I'm going and making, you know, the move or the gesture or the introduction and say, hey. Whereas they used to do it they used to, well, I won't say they used to do it like as if I didn't care and I wasn't communicating with them. No, I, I, I would communicate with them, but they would send me pictures and, you know, videos and everything like that. But ever since our Zoom meeting in which some of you probably hadn't known, but when I got to Zoom, have a Zoom meeting with my son, it was beautiful. It was it was amazing. We got to talk and I got to see him and like mother and son. And then when they saw his emotion and my emotion, they just slowly, but not so slowly, they drifted off of us communicating that often anymore. And I know some of you are just like, well, because, you know, they cut off communication or not cut off communication, but they slowed down the communication because, you know, they probably didn't want to hurt him or they didn't want to cause you trauma. No. Because we had already spoken about that ahead of time. And we laughed about it like, OK, you know, he, he may cry or, you know. And they, she was just like, I may cry too. And then we, then when we get on the Zoom meeting, it's a whole different story. Now she's not crying. Now she's just like, oh, it's okay. And it's just like, we had this conversation beforehand. You changing the tune. All right. He misses me and I miss him, you know? And so I say that because, I, well, I say, going back to being on your guard, because there may be an instance like that where, where a person or something is just like, you're too happy. Let me see what we got going on here. Let me, let me see what I can stir up so that you're not in a happy mood. And, and that's what he attempted to do. There is no reason to say that what he said. It wasn't a whole lot, but it wasn't a reason for him to say what he said. And then he said, I could talk to him about it. Well, no, I'm not. He's one of those, he's one of those guys where because he feels he's older than me, he knows a lot more. And like, he's my mentor. He's like one of those guys that feels like <laughs> he could mentor a woman. And it's like, no, you cannot. Do you have your stuff together? Are you happy where you are in life? No? Okay, so you you not you don't know what that path is like to success or you just don't. You don't. You don't. And you can see some people who have not healed yet. 
It's written all over your face. It's written all over your face, but that's why I brought that up. Just be mindful, be careful. Because that was unnecessary. And like I said, I know how my son is doing. So that brings me peace. He's alive. I know what he looks like. I know how tall he is. I know what his, some of his personality is like. And I'm going to keep going. I'm, I'm persistent. I'm consistent. So I'm going to keep that going with just everything in life, especially when it comes to my children. So, yes. But on another topic, I actually did want to talk about that same guy. So, my son's dad. So, my children's dad. I was thinking earlier, basically, that how do you have a child who you ask nothing about? How do you do that? Knowing that that child is alive. And yes, they are wondering where you are and what you're doing and all of that because they come from you. And it's like, how do people like that sleep at night? Yes, I understand it's, some of it can be guilt, but if your child is still alive and the parents, the adoptive family is, is willing to work a little something out with you, get that opportunity and do as much as you can. You may get rejected. You may get rejected, but you'll feel better knowing, okay, I, I did everything I could possibly do to reach you. Now you're of age, or now I have what I need to fight for you, or you know, now I have the resources, the influence, the power, the money, the whatever it is to go after my child then you do it because you don't want five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years to pass by and you missed out on this child's life and they missed out on yours, not knowing who you are, but you missed out on theirs. So, but for those, for those people, I'm not talking to every single body. I'm just, for those who just, can go about their day not speaking to their child. Even if you don't have guardianship. Okay, so say like you're the secondary parent. How do you go to sleep comfortable at nighttime knowing that you have not spoken to your child? Because you and this woman fell out. You and the baby's mom fell out. Or your children's mother fell out. Or you, or you and your child's father fell out. And you just like, well, just gonna go about my business? No. If you can work something out with that other parent, then work it out. If you're not able to, do what you can within reason. And do what you can to speak to your child, see your child. If, if you're not able to do that, you made an effort. So, but make sure, like, okay, some people will say that and be like, well, I still don't get to see my child like somebody I know. Like, I still don't get to see my child and I'm being held back. Are you a good influence on this child? Do you, you know, are you a good influence on this child? Are you in a healing process? Because to those who say that, just like, well, I'm not, I'm still not 
I'm still in that position of not being able to see my child and and for whatever reason, some people are in denial because you may not be a good influence on that child. That's why. That is why I've heard I've heard I've heard a plethora of things that people say about their children. I'm not judging. But some of that stuff is really alarming. Like I've heard a guy call his son a P S S Y. And it's like, first of all, that's your child. Why would you call him that? And secondly, that's a you put it, you put that P word in a derogatory form term you don't say that when you actually going on a date and you expect that from a woman it's not nothing derogatory then because you want it talking about a guy you want the p u mm, 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 crooked letter crooked letter <laughs> why then i've heard a guy call call his teenage son that the P U cricket letter cricket letter word, and I was disgusted. He knows who he knows who he is. Hopefully, he's watching this because he should be ashamed of himself talking about his flesh and blood like that, and then go to pretending like they all he's one to see him and all of this other stuff. It's it. Ooh, talk about multiple personalities. Talk about mean-spirited people. That's a mean-spirited person. And I even heard somebody say, well, my child can't come in my room. They got to knock. Your child is a toddler. What do you mean? They have to knock before they enter. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. This child is a toddler. What do you mean they have to knock on your door before they come in? They're a toddler. This isn't a 15-year-old. Honestly, the things I hear. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. There's some bad influences out here. <laughs> well, those, those people have children, so no. So if you're not seeing your child for, for a reason, it may be valid. And if it's not valid and that person is just doing it out of spite, whether it's the child's mother or the child's father, okay, there are situations like that too. But every situation is not because that person, that child's mother, that child's father is being spiteful because you two are no longer together. So they're using that child as a pawn and using that child as a pawn, they're holding that child from you. Not every situation is like that. Some, some people are bad influences as parents. No, sir. No, sir. Not having that. Not having that. So, Get on with the get on and do all that, all that nonsense. No, you're not seeing this child calling him names and saying this this baby got to knock on a door before <laughs> before they come in. This is a child. This is a toddler. Yeah, no, you're not right. Some some you're not you're not healed from your own trauma and abandonment issues. You can go on with that, you know. So go on with that and you know what in in my situation i didn't say i was perfect we both got problems but who is managing their stuff better and wanting to be better that would be me Okay, or if it's your situation, maybe it's you as a father who's managing his 
his life in the best way that he can. And, you know, he's still got problems, okay? I, we all do. But he's willing to be better. Whereas, you know, maybe the woman he had children with isn't willing to do the same. Okay? There's a conflict there. But the resolution is, okay, take all that out. What can you do for your children? Okay, she's not allowing you to see them or, or the baby. Do what you can. Or reverse side. Because it's more women who are single parents than single dads. And for single women, if you see that child's father or children's father is not getting his stuff together, yet he claims that he is, but you are willing to make the strides to be better and to do better and to have better. But this joker is not. Okay, well, you're managing better than he is. Okay, well, children need to stay with you. Because I'm not for that, well, that's their dad. Oh, okay, yes, but a person got to be in their right mind, okay? There is so much going on with in this world. Being a good influence takes effort and it takes constant practice. And there has to be improvement, not going backwards. That means you're going forward. Now, okay, you may stumble here. Or you may have a hiccup here. Okay, that's life. But if you just constantly on a downhill, you have, you, you, you take one step forward to then go five steps back, but you say you want to be better. No, because that's not giving your child st mental stability. That's not giving your child spiritual stability. Child needs stability, physical stability too. And so with that stuff, go ahead and go on about your business and you do what you can as a single parent, male or woman, you do what you can for your children. So All right, I'm done on here. Let's see. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to say it like that. I didn't mean to say it like that. Let me see. No. I I was going to like free free hand a, a topic. I'm not even going to do that. I hurt myself. Come up with stuff. I'll be on here so long just thinking like, well, Did y'all see the Brooklyn Nets? <laughs> I'm just going to be throwing random stuff in there. Like, well, y'all see so Okay, I Okay, we'll we'll get on the Brooklyn Nets just for a little bit and then I'm going to be out of here. They got swept, y'all. They got swept. They got swept. No, Kevin. No, but you know what? They're human too. They're human too. Yeah, people can say what is, well, not everybody, but they work hard. They're athletes and whatever, what not. But, Kevin, somebody need to check on Kevin. Somebody need to check. That's not the Kevin we know. Okay, to get swept. Somebody needs to call and check on Kevin. <laughs> I wanted to do that meme on Twitter, but I don't have any followers, so I don't think it would have mattered if I did the meme. <laughs> but I wanted to do the meme when I saw that game. <laughs> I wanted to do like Home Alone, Kevin! And just fall right on out or post that, <laughs> or post that video where they're at the airport. Home Alone 1 and 2, where I just like, I forgot about something. No, we, it's something we forgot. Kevin! And then the second one, they was at the airport and she was passing the bag. Like, give this, give this to Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Give this to Kevin. 
And the little boy looked up, and it was a oh, uh, it was an elderly couple. And he was like, "Hmm, Kevin's not here." And then they went back down the road. Kevin's not here. Kevin's not here. Kevin's not here. Kevin's not here. And then by the time we got to the parents, it was like, "Kevin's not here." Dad said, "What?" And the mom was just laughing, like, "Kee kee 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 kee." I'm getting off of here because I'll be ranting about Brooklyn Nets and I don't need to do that. So, <laughs> y'all have a good evening. I will see you next time.